Amen. Good morning, everyone. So thankful to, to bring the word that God's been downloading to me this morning for us. And uh, I have absolutely loved this trailblazing series. How many of you guys have been loving this series? Man, Pastor Justina just nailed it week number one when she really taught us as trailblazers about how we have to have foresight and insight and hindsight. And, and, and week number two, Pastor Kyle preached on, if we're going to be trailblazers within our lives, we're going to have to understand we're going to have some bullies and battles. And last week, Pastor Joe brought the heat, and he just shared as trailblazers, we have to remember that God's going to do a new thing in us and he's going to bring us out of a place of brokenness. And so I'm, I'm thankful today to bring the word to you. And, and the title of the message is Honor Reflector. But before we jump into the message, I want to look into the cameras and I want to welcome all the men and women that are joining us from the Correction Center of Northwest Ohio. We love you guys. We believe in you. Church, can we welcome our CCNO family? So thankful to, to bring the message, our last and final week of Trailblazer. And as, we, as we've been hearing, and if you're new joining us today with Trailblazer, what is a trailblazer? A trailblazer is one who blazes trails that others can follow after. Often a trailblazer is a pioneer. It's someone who goes before us, blazes trails that's never been walked before. And so as I was praying just um, over the message that God's been giving me the last few months, he really just spoke that this is a word that's the foundation of a trailblazer. See, Honor Reflector, he downloaded these words to me back in Belize. My daughter and I had went with the church on a, to a mission strip. And, and I remember just one afternoon, I just was studying the word, and we were tucked away. We had a little break, and, and I was just really hungry for leadership. I was just digging into God's word, and, and he began to speak this word to me about actually my husband. And I was praying for him back at home with my boys, and he gave me this word that my husband was an honor reflector. And I'd never heard that word before. I'd heard the word honor so many times, but I'd never heard the words honor reflector. And so I began on this journey of really digging into God's word. What is an honor reflector? And that's what I want to share this morning with all of us. See, we live in a culture that's very dishonoring. Our nature is, is to be dishonoring. It's just the culture that we're in today. And as trailblazers, God's calling us to a deeper level of honor. And I want to give you the definition of honor. It says, high respect. To honor is to have high respect, great esteem. And I've heard that word honor, but to hear the word reflector next to it, see the definition to reflect means to turn into or away from a course. To reflect something means we redirect it. It's redirecting honor away to a different course. And so often we find ourselves honoring God and honoring people, but we sometimes lack what it truly means to be an honor reflector. And here's what scripture tells us in Isaiah 29, 13. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And it grieved me when I read that scripture because I've wondered how many times did I really think that I was honoring God, but my heart was far from him. And I wonder how many of us are sitting in here today and we're, we're trying to blaze the trails that God's calling us to. We're attempting to live out the call that God has on our lives, but we're lacking some honor, reflecting. And so what's the big deal about honor? Why is honor so important to the heart of God? Honor is a biblical mandate. See, God instructs us to honor one another to show honor within our marriages, to show honor to our children, to show honor to our authorities. 
to show honor, for students to honor their parents. All throughout scripture, it comes back to a heart of surrender and honor. This is why it's so crucial for us to understand as we move forward. It's why the Defiance Dream Center does what it does. See, one of the core values of the Defiance Dream Center is honor. Our hearts ought to honor God as we honor others. It's why we go out on a cold Saturday and serve in our community. It's why 80 volunteers show up on a day like yesterday to show honor where honors do. I just want to read a little bit of what happened yesterday. We had partnering organizations. These are some of the organizations. We had St. John Lutheran, St. Paul Lutheran, United Methodist, King's Cross, First Apostolic Church, Hebron Ministries, honoring as we link arms together with these churches. We had eight different teams that went out to flood this community with the hands and feet of Jesus. They went to the east side adopt-a-block, the north side adopt-a-block. We had three different home repairs where we got to go in and honor single moms, widows, women that are in some broken situations and show them honor as we served them. Our Empower Hour. We have our mentees come in who are going through our life coaching with their life coaches. We get to honor these women that are coming in and feeling shame and guilt from their past. We get to love on them. We get to honor them. Our auto repairs. Can I just say, we are honoring God when we get to serve and fix an something on a car for a widow or a single mother. It's at the heart of who we are. See, honor brings value to relationships. There's something special about honor that brings a special protection and a favor within relationships. And so I want to share with you some of the dangers of not having honor. Because see, we can know some of the blessings and favor that comes with honor, but there's equally dangers that come when we lack honor reflecting within our life. See, when we don't have honor, it can bring division within relationships. It can bring strong division within marriages. I can't even begin to explain how many times my husband and I have had couples come to us for marriage counseling, and at the heart of all of their issues, it all comes back to a root of dishonor. See, when dishonor is lacking, it's an open door for all kinds of other issues and sin to enter. When we lack honor, it also stirs a spirit of suspicion. If you've ever been in a dishonoring environment, it stirs a spirit of suspicion. You begin to feel a little suspicious of the people that you are around. Dishonor. It stirs mistrust, contention, strife, tension. I want you to feel the tension of what dishonor truly brings. Because if we want to be honor reflectors, we have to understand how dangerous it is to have any hint of dishonor within our hearts. So I'm going to hit on three things. What honor is not? Okay, honor is not, number one, if you're taking notes, it's not a false humility. Honor is not a false humility. I'd like to put it just as simple as I can. A false humility is just pretending that you're humble. Anybody ever be around something like that? Do not hit anybody next to you if that's somebody you're sitting next to. You can smell false humility from afar. False humility is when somebody, when you try to give them a compliment or you try to speak into them, and even just something as simple as, oh, that wasn't really that big of a deal. No, it is really not me. But you try to like put on this false humility, that is not honor. See, the scripture says in Proverbs 15, the fear of the Lord is instruction in wisdom. And humility comes before honor. See, if we want to give honor and be honored, we have to understand humility has to come before we can ever receive honor. 
Before we can reflect honor, we have to be in a state of true humility. The second thing that honor is not is flattery. Flattery. Sometimes we can think we're showing honor when really at the heart of it is flattery. And I want to read the definition of flattery, and I really want you to open your hearts to receive what God wants you to hear in this. Because, see, flattery can often be masked as honor. We think it's honor. But here's what flattery is. Flattery is excessive and insincere praise. It's given especially to further one's own interest. See, sometimes we can think we're honoring others, but ever so slightly in the crevices of our soul is that desire for ourself to be exalted in that moment. In that moment, there's a little bit of self that gets stirred up in that. We have to watch for flattery. And if you ever wonder, how do I, how do I know if I've tiptoed from honor to flattery? Here's some of the symptoms. Here's how you can tell if you've crossed into flattery of any sort. It's when you begin to idolize someone or something in your life. It can be someone that you're doing life with. It can be a leader. It can be a boss. It can be a child. It can be a title. It can be a church. It can be a leader. It can be a pastor. It can be your own spouse. Any time that it crosses over the line of honor into a place where we begin to idolize this person, we begin to idolize this thing, we begin to idolize what they're doing, we've crossed over from true honor into a spirit of flattery. Another symptom that you can often find when you begin to become flattered or you're giving flattery is you'll find that you're constantly offended. If you're just constantly offended and annoyed and agitated, can I just say that is a symptom right away to know that you have crossed over from honor into flattery. And people can really try to honor us, but we receive it as flattery. And here's what the Bible says about flattery. In Galatians 1.10, it says, for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Here's the thing. Paul is saying to the Galatian church, you know when you've crossed into flattery, when you think you're honoring your leader, you think you're honoring your boss, you think you're honoring your spouse, but really at the heart of it, there's something in it for you. And that is flattery. And here's what Jude 1.16 says. These are grumblers. They're malcontents. They follow their own sinful desires. They're loud-mouthed boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. If we want to be trailblazers and we want to have heart of honor reflecting, we have to watch that we never teeter in to flattery where it's for our own advantage. The third thing that honor is not using our position for power. Using our position for power. Honor is not about using anything about us for power. It never comes back to our giftings, our abilities, our call, our dreams, our position in life, where God's place is. It's never about us. It's always understanding that our empowerment comes from the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4, 2 says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love not misusing our position for power. Understanding that our God-given power is from the Holy Spirit. See, as trailblazers, we have to understand we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to empower other people. 
And when I was studying this and God was revealing some things to me, he says, whenever somebody uses, misuses their position for power, it feeds insecurity and pride. Whenever we use our position in any facet to gain attention for ourselves, to gain focus of ourselves, to gain a pat on the back in any facet, it will feed pride and insecurity. So maybe we're sitting here and we're saying, so we know what honor isn't. What is an honor reflector? And here's what it is. Number one, if you're taking notes, an honor reflector, number one, is empowered by the Holy Spirit. See, they understand that the power is nothing about them. It's nothing about who they are and what they do. It's truly understanding at the core, it's all the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 11 through 12 tells us, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. Long before we heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us. I love that part. Before we could even imagine a, a trail that he wanted us to blaze, he had his eye on you. He had his eye on you. He had his eye on you before the dream even began to start within you. He had his eye on you. And it says he has designs for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose, he's working out in everything and every one. See, trailblazers throughout Scripture, if you look at the trailblazer that's gone before us, and, and, and you look at Moses, and you look at Joshua, and you look at Caleb, and you look at Elijah, and you look at Elisha, and you look at Nehemiah, and I could go on and on listing all of these trailblazers who have blazed trails for us to follow after, to learn from. At the very core of their being, they understood that their empowerment never came from their ability they understood at the very depths. If you look throughout scripture, often these people felt overwhelmed. They, know it was, they knew it was beyond them. They knew that the call that God had on their life was well beyond them. And there was such a state of humility of understanding their empowerment came from the Holy Spirit. God had his eye on them before he, they ever had their eye on God. And so I think for some of us in here, God's calling us, I want you to honor the call that I have on you. Just like God had his eye on these trailblazers that's blazed before us, he has his eye on you. And I think for some of us, we don't recognize it because we can feel like, the, like it's hard work. For some of us, maybe it's just you're starting a new business and you know God's stirring something within you. You can't quite put your finger on it. But when you understand that the empowerment comes from the Holy Spirit to lead a business with integrity, to lead a business that's going to pour into the life of others, you recognize that God is in it. God's at the heart of it. See, empowerment versus elevation is something that God taught me in this study because I began to hear these two words, empower and elevate. And so I went on this little journey of digging into God's word and saying, what's the difference, God? And he said, empower, when you're truly empowered by the Holy Spirit, empower means to make someone stronger. See, when we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, he is making us stronger. The second part of that definition is to equip. Our equipping comes from the Holy Spirit. But see, sometimes we get this empowerment mixed up with elevate. See, elevate, the definition of elevate means to magnify or to make lofty. Elevate, make lofty means to be proud, to be aloof, to be self-important. Often we can teeter in between feeling empowered and we can start to feel elevated in what we're doing. And here's the danger of it. Here's what, 
Here's God's thoughts on it. In Proverbs 16, 5, he says, God can't stomach the arrogance or pretense. Believe me, he'll put those upstarts in their place. If God senses any kind of self-elevation or elevation that we're putting on to somebody else, see, because as, as trailblazers, God's calling us to reflect honor, to empower others around us, but God never called us to elevate others around us. See, when we elevate ourselves or other people that we lead or that we influence, whether it's in our families or in our jobs or wherever God's called us to be, if we elevate those people, we're actually setting ourselves up for failure as well as them. Because see, what happens with elevation is it fuels insecurity and pride. Whenever we feel elevated in something we're doing, it's fueling insecurity and pride. And here's the definition of upstart. It's a person who's risen suddenly to position. See, often God will not, allow, he will not empower us to go to another position because often our character doesn't match the call at the time. Because otherwise we fall into this elevated state where then we operate in pride or insecurity. And we vacillate between the two. One moment we feel self-important, the next we feel insecure. That's because we've been elevated instead of understanding that we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. See, honor brings a protection. When we understand that it's God's empowerment, we reflect honor onto others, it brings a protection over ourselves. It brings a protection in our marriages. It brings a protection within our relationship. God's favor is upon honor. We understand we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 2, 7 through 10 says, now God has us right where he wants us. With all the time in the world, and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus, saving is all his idea and all his work. All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. Here's my favorite part of the verse. We don't play the major role. When we understand that we don't play the major role, guess what it does? It takes the focus and the pressure off of us. So when trailblazers blazed the trails, they understood they didn't play the major role. When Nehemiah understood it was not about Nehemiah to build the wall, when he honor reflected back to Jesus, he reflected back to God, he reflected onto his team, guess what it did? He, he realized he didn't play the major role. And often in our lives, we can get stuck in this thing when God calls us to something to start to feel like we kind of play the major role. And the second part of that verse is if we did, we'd go around bragging that we had done this whole thing. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does the making. God does the saving. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him, to join him. He says, you don't play the major role. You just get to join me. And when we really have that at the heart of us, guess what would be an overflow? We will reflect honor back to him, and we will reflect honor back to others. And that's the heart of a trailblazer, honor reflector. I can't help but, but think this week as I was praying over our original launch team, actually, that that pioneered and trailblazed the way for Experience Church. And a few weeks ago, we had them in our home, and we just felt led to honor them and to love on them and to thank them because they blazed trails that weren't easy. See, they prayed. They fasted. They were on their faces. They were setting up a little kid's church in my basement with an old-fashioned projector on the wall. Nothing fancy, right? Nobody sees those early days of trailblazing, right? And I couldn't help but thank the Lord for each and every one of them. But I have to say, as I looked around the room, 
I couldn't help but recognize how many had some good years that they had blazed trails to bring us where we were today. See, God wants us to honor some of those that have that gray hair, that have lived some long years, that's walked through some hard things, because it's from those people that we can learn, we can sit at their feet, we can learn what they want to teach us. And I couldn't help but recognize and, and think back on, on my husband and I's first years of marriage, and, and we were young, and one of our favorite Sunday school teachers was a 78-year-old man. We were 20 and 21 at the time. And can I just say, there's probably not a month that goes by that I don't think back on that 78-year-old man who poured into us as a spiritual father that we got to learn from his wisdom. He was an honor reflector. See, he had an ability to know it wasn't about him. He didn't get to play the major role. He just joined God. Our original launch team, they knew it wasn't about them. Nobody played the major role. They just got to join him and what God was doing. And if we really want to be honor reflectors, we have to do number two. We have to live in a state of meekness. We have to live in a state of meekness. See, meekness is often sometimes thought of by people as a little timid, weak individual. If somebody's meek, they just kind of think, oh, they're just sweet and quiet. But see, meekness is a supernatural strength and ability from the Holy Spirit. It takes humility to a whole nother level. See, meekness is dying to self. It's dying to your personal rights. It's dying to your personal agenda. See, a state of meekness has nothing about self within it. A true spirit of meekness, when someone walks in a spirit of meekness, they have no me involved. They have no me involved in their emails. They're not trying to email with an agenda for their own satisfaction. They're not responding to their spouse to justify their actions. They're not treating their children a certain way because I'm the parent. See, meekness takes a spirit of humility to a whole nother level. And when we walk in a spirit of meekness, we actually die to our own desires. Do you know how many times on a weekly basis I have to die to myself? Do you know how many times I've wanted to say something, respond to something, that the Lord has said to me, you will shut your mouth and you will die to yourself. Because it's when we die to our own agenda, when we die to our own justification, that's when the honor comes. That's when the empowerment comes from the Holy Spirit. That takes a whole nother level of strength than to say what we think, do what we want to do. And so as honor reflectors, we have to understand meekness is crucial to the heart of God. Proverbs 29, 23 says, pride will land you flat on your face, but humility prepares you for honor. Every time that we have self into something, it will land us on our face every single time. The perfect, easy definition to write in your notes for meekness to remember, denying yourself. If you just want to sum it up within two words, deny yourself. It's a whole nother level of meekness. And here's Matthew 16, 24. He says, Jesus then went to work on his disciples. And here's what he said to them. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You are not in the driver's seat. He said to the disciples, you're not in the driver's seat. You want to come with me? You want to join me? You want to be part of what I'm doing? I'm in the driver's seat. Don't run from suffering. Instead, embrace it. And let me just tell you, when you die to yourself, I promise you, you will suffer. <laughs> you will go through some hard things, 
But on the other side, man, the reward is so great. The rewards within your relationships, the rewards in your job, the reward within the ministry, the reward with your children, it is so worth it. And here's what Jesus said in the end of that. He said, self-help is no help at all. He told his disciples, self-sacrifice is the way. My way. And then here's my favorite. He says, to find yourself your true self. There's a lot of people, they're still trying to find themselves. You know what Jesus' secret sauce is? Die to yourself. When you die to yourself, that's when you find your true self. There's revelation in that. When I understood that it wasn't about Steph, it's not about what's in it for me. It's not about recognition for me. It's not about glory for me. And nothing is about me. It's all about him. It's in that moment when you find your true self. And that's when God says, now you're ready to join me. Now you're ready to blaze some trails. Now you're in the spot to go where no one else has ever gone before. See, so, so many times when we receive honor, often it kind of like sticks within us. Sometimes we can receive honor from other people, and it kind of sticks within our soul. And, and I remember I was, when I was years ago working um, as a nurse still, and I remember speaking in, and I was trying to honor this nurse that I was working with, and just really, um, just trying to encourage her because she was excellent in what she did. And I'll never forget, she looked at me and she said to me, I don't like flattery. And I remember it kind of took me back because at the, really at the heart, I wanted to honor her. But what was so sad to me is God was exposing to me when someone has been in a culture where it's all flattery or they've received it as flattery, they don't even know how to receive proper honor. See, because receiving proper honor is when we reflect it off ourself. So here's a way to discover if you receive honor, and it kind of feels good, and you're like, ooh, I needed that. Mm, I was kind of hungry for that. That is not godly honor. What's honor is when somebody can give us some honor. And here's what we do. We reflect it off of ourself. We reflect it back to Christ. We take the honor, we reflect it off of ourselves and onto others. We don't play the major role. It's not about us. We get to be honor reflectors. Back to Christ, on to others. That's when we find our true selves. The third and final thing as we close today, if we want to be honor reflectors, we have to walk in a greater intuition. We have to walk in a greater intuition. See, intuition is being deeply spirit-led. The difference between intuition, being spirit-led and being soul-led, our souls are our mind and our emotions and our will. See, our soul is often what will lead us. We feel like saying it. We feel like doing it. We feel flattered. We feel this. I'm going to say this. And we can get caught up in that. And here's the thing that God's saying. You're not called to be soul-led. You're called to be spirit-led. See, Jesus was our ultimate example of being spirit-led. Here he says, here's an example, Matthew 26, 41. The spirit is willing. Mark 2, 8, Jesus knowing fully in his spirit. He ground deeply within his spirit. The true worshipers will worship the Father in their spirit. He, what he was doing was he was operating with intuition. He was being spirit-led. Spirit-led is walking in a greater level of intuition. It's dying and starving the soul and walking and being led by the Spirit of God. 
When Jesus said these things, he became troubled in his spirit. He had an intuition. Something's not right. He didn't feel it. He was intuitive to the power of the Holy Spirit. And if we want to blaze these trails that God's calling us, if we want to advance, if we want to accelerate, if we want to acquire all that God has for us, we have to remember we have to be led by the power of the Holy Spirit, greater levels of intuition. Let's close our eyes as we pray this morning. You know, the Acts 1-8, just this morning, somebody actually sent me this scripture this morning, and it was just so power-packed because such a reminder of what true surrender and being led by the Spirit comes down to. Acts 1, 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. See, it's then that we have the power to do all that God's called us to do. When we're in such a state of surrender to say, God, it is not about me. I don't play a major role. God, I just get to join you. I surrender to you. I want to be a man. I want to be a woman that walks in greater levels of intuition. It's in that time when God says, now my spirit can pour upon you. You will be led by my spirit, not led by, my, by your soul. And so for some of you in here today, maybe God's calling you to greater levels of reflecting honor back to God and back to others. And if God's speaking to you, I just want to see your hand. I want to pray for you. Just raise your hand. I see all the hands all over the place. God, we thank you for the hands in this place, God. You see the hearts of your people. God, you see the depths, God, within them, God, where you're speaking to them, where your Holy Spirit right now is revealing to them, God, the areas that you want to take them in their honor reflecting. God, I, I thank you, Lord, that you're doing a greater work. You're doing a deeper work, God, as you're calling them to blaze trails that no one's walked before, God, as they learn to reflect honor back to you, God. So for some of you sitting in here, and maybe you've never surrendered your heart to Christ, and I want to give you the opportunity. And maybe you're saying, I want to be a trailblazer. I want to show honor and reflect honor in my life, but I've never had the opportunity. And if that's you today, I want to see your hand. I want to pray for you. And I want you to pray with me just this simple prayer. God, I surrender my heart to you today. God, I give you honor for who you are, God. I ask you to guide my life. Direct, I surrender it completely to you. I give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.